there was a question about the children's deliverance service and I had a I'm gonna have to hire a new and new uh, announcer <laughs> we just do the children's deliverance services during the summer you know when everybody's out of school preteens yeah so uh, we do them every summer yeah and please bring your kids tomorrow so it's it's a great service and uh, very warm rewarding and gives you a warm and feeling seeing kids get delivered you know I wish my parents they were drunks I wish they would have taken me to a children's deliverance service when I was a kid it would have saved me a lifetime of hell Wow nobody had deliverance service when I was a kid but uh, by God's grace we have one here Wow and some the demons some of them did just fly out of these kids. It's utterly amazing beautiful to watch It's worth it so, God bless you. Okay, let's uh, get going here Ladies nights at our next seminar. That's usually our best seminar of the year the women come and the men will be in the uh, overflow sanctuary We'll have the women in here. It really goes great that's our new website. If you haven't been on it, I hope you check it out. Check out my radio programs. I'm on every day here in uh, Arizona. And uh, I'm also on all the time on the internet on Omni FM. Also on the uh, internet radio on a secular station, Dark Sky Radio. And that's going great. My listeners dropped to under 2,100 last week. So next week it will probably be 3,100. It's been going like that. It's been weird. But anyway, I'll take 2,100. I'd take 20. I'll do anything to help even one person. <clears throat> if you want to help us, you can just buy stuff on Amazon. And they'll pay us if you buy stuff. They just go to Smile Amazon, put in our name, and they pay us. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. Free moolah. Same thing on Good Search. Switch over from Google. And they'll pay us. Tonight's uh, broadcast is on our... YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. There's the uh, miracle list for people who want to go through self-deliverance. I send out about a dozen of these a week. Not too many people do them, but the ones that do do them are, they send me a testimony and I put it on the testimonial on the website. It's really amazing. Most people don't do it because the devil uh, distracts them and drifts them off into other things. And so it's, it's a war out there. It's a fight. Don't forget about your terror cells in your church. You're supposed to be opening up a terror cell, and you're supposed to be terrorizing the devil at your church. You sneak in there, you get two or three in the name of Jesus. That's a terror cell. It's right in the Bible. In fact, it's in Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst. And then you just find a sick person. How hard's that? I mean, with the exception of a hospital, there's sick people all over churches. I mean, they look around. Every pew has got some sick person. So you'll never run out of clients. Thanks for your donations. We pay all of our bills on time or ahead of time, unless I forget. That isn't your fault. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> and we get a lot of donations on PayPal on the website. Boy, we thank you for that. God love you. Thanks for keeping us going. Hey, I thought I would do something tonight uh, that's a little more fun. I've been doing a lot of uh, hard topics lately. So I thought I would do something a little more uh, interesting and enjoyable. <laughs> I see I see. I should have kept with the hard topics. Um, <laughs> now, Apostle Paul, as you know, was the greatest Christian that ever lived. And he had a tremendous skill that he taught everybody. He had this ability to bifurcate the temporal world and the eternal world. He could bifurcate the natural world and the spirit world. And in Paul's mind, his mindset, to him it was nothing more than a transitional thing. And so this concept of having these two worlds, 
to him gave him the ability to go through shocking levels of persecution okay. we wouldn't even be sitting here if he hadn't had this concept in his mind and I wanted to share it with you tonight so that hopefully you would develop it too it is incredible there's a temporal world and there's an eternal world and nothing that happened to Paul in the temporal world threw him off course because he had this concept that this was simply a transition from here to here and the persecution he suffered here he considered as something like believe it or not only because he had this world on his mind that makes some sense so let's take a quick look at what he taught it's fantastic second Corinthians 4 uh, for which cause we do not faint though our outward man is perishing the up means to yeah decay it runs out and I'm in my 60s now and I can testify this thing's decaying uh, I say, when I got in my 60s it's not going well things are drooping odd gas appears I mean it's weird things are weird when you get old trust me on that one stay young do not do what I did the inward man though and a kind not all is renovated every day or day by day okay how do you do that well I'll get to it in a minute he had this concept down pat and it's very similar to the Hubble Space Telescope have you ever heard of this thing well this thing is probably the greatest invention in the history of humanity this thing has shown us more and taught us more about God than anything ever created in the world but over the years this telescope has been completely renovated they have replaced every part on it and it's probably good for another three years before they got to bag the thing but every so often they send people in odd outfits up to replace parts on this thing and that's what Paul was saying my outward man is falling apart and I'm sure he was in his mind writing that thinking about the persecution in addition to aging but my inward man never aged he never got older and this concept here I'll show you show you why this Hubble Space Telescope is utterly incredible that is a galaxy somewhere in the universe but uh, it's the crown of thorn galaxy nobody ever knew this existed see that thing there it looks like the crown of thorns and the devil screwed up big time he murdered Jesus Christ which cost him his kingdom because it was the first time he ever murdered somebody who was totally innocent and that's what cost him his kingdom everybody else he had murdered or died deserved to die because the soul that sinneth it shall die but then the because of hate the guy went overboard he went nuts and he beat the living <coughs> stuffing out of Jesus's body and that beating the Romans put on him and the Jews put on him was what father used to heal your body Amen. and the devil so consumed with hate and when you hate you don't think straight when you hate you don't talk straight when you hate you do things you regret later when you hate you don't think right and you don't behave right when you're consumed by hate you do things later on you're going oh my god I wish I would have thought that through that happened to the devil he's pulling his hair out or whatever he has on his head he's going I shouldn't have killed him what was I thinking well it was hate hate will cause you to do things you would never do in a normal circumstance then afterward raw hate while well, before they beat the living life out of him they they put this crown of thorns on his head and a, a Roman soldier bashed it into his skull and the, the thorns stuck into his head and God used that to heal your mental illness Amen. hate blinded him he didn't see what he was doing then after he was dead consumed by hate and hate will drive you to do things 
you would never do in a normal circumstance. He told this Roman soldier to take a spear and ram it up into his guts. It went all the way up into his heart, tore every, pulled it out, and guess what came out? Blood's pouring all over the place, washing away your sins. Water come pouring out. The washing and regenerating and renewing of the by the word of God. Outpoured through hate. Boy, have you ever hated somebody? Man, you'll you'll say some things to them you will regret later. You ever hate, particularly if they, they have a badge on? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. And this incredible Hubble telescope, billions of years, this was all hidden until this incredible thing. NASA put this thing up there. Utterly amazing. And now there's a crown of thorns universe. And in addition, the, the telescope has documented there's two sextillion galaxies in the universe. We're in the Milky Way galaxy. We're only one galaxy, which amounts to this. You can't even see it. That's a two with 24 zeros after it. See? That's almost as much money as Bill Gates has. All right. And then he says, check it out here. Back to the verse. He says, our light affliction. Now, can you imagine it? This, this guy is getting the stuffing beaten out of him constantly. Shipwrecked. Uh, stoned to death. Everything happened to this poor guy. He calls it a light affliction. It's only a moment because he says a paratika. It means it's only temporary. Because it's working for me a far greater and exceeding eternal weight of glory. See that? So if you could develop Paul's understanding of the temporal world and the spirit, the natural world and the spirit world, the temporal world, the eternal. If you could grasp this concept tonight, nothing that happens to you here is going to bother you anymore. Check it out. This Greek word for eternal, I want you to memorize this now. Ionius. Okay? Go ahead and say that. Those of you who didn't say it, raise your hand so we can take you to the deliverance room. <laughs> Ionius means forever, eternity, everlasting. And it's the Greek word ion, which is age, and Ionius is age, 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 age. And ion is an age. So the millennial in our future is an age, right? Some ages are longer, some are shorter, but some never end. Eternity, that age never ends, Ionius. Uh, maybe I'm not doing that right. Let me get to the next verse. This will help. This this might help. Ion means a an age, and in the King James Bible, it's translated as world, which was a, which was a mistake. An age is not a world. It's a period of time, right? Now, Ionius means in Greek means ageless. In other words, one age stacked on another. Ad infinitum, right? In Hebrew, olam is the same as uh, Ionius. It's eternity, forever. Okay. Alam in in Hebrew means an indefinite period of time, without a set end. Something that goes on and on indefinitely. Okay. Now let's let's just take a quick look at that. While we look not at the things which are seen. We look at the things which are not seen. Blepo is to look at something with your eyes. Paul saw this world, but he could not see this world. But he had a grasp of this world, which made this world irrelevant. See, Paul's concept of the natural world was if somebody cussed him out, it blew off him like a feather because his mind was here. See, the relatives didn't like him, so he didn't get invited to Thanksgiving. It never bothered him because he had the marriage supper of the lamb on his mind. Is this helping anybody? Paul was able to go through enormous 
persecutions and beatings and everything else in the book only because he had this on his mind he was an expert on the unseen world the things which are seen Paul said are for a skyrus seasonal seasonal he used that word because everybody understood it summer is only seasonal it's not permanent unless you live if you live anywhere else, it's always a season. See, a season is temporary. See, here in America, unfortunately, marriage is a season. It's not going to last too long. This is seasonal, temporary, but the things that are not seen, blepo, with the eyes that you look at, are ionious, forever. The spirit world is forever and never ends, but the carnal world, the temporal world, your marriage, your job, your career, your problems, people who don't like you, all that stuff is seasonal. And so since Paul had this concept, he was able to redeem the time here, maximizing his ministry, and overlook all the temptations and trials and heartaches he faced because his mind was always home. Number one, the kingdom of God is eternal. Here it is, Psalms 145. Some things are temporal, some things are eternal. Your kingdom is an everlasting olam. Forever, kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Revelation 1. I am he that lives and was dead. Behold, I am alive forevermore. I, I own you. Into the age. Amen. Ice is into. I own ages. I have the keys of hell and death. Keys are what? A symbolic thing of what? Authority. Okay. I got keys here. See this key? I can get into my office with this key. That means my wife can't lock me out. <laughs> Folks, you've got to think ahead in this business. <laughs> Keys are symbols of authority. And who has the most authority? Oh, it's obvious. Luke chapter 1. The angel said about Jesus, He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. And he said, He shall reign over the house of Jacob. I own into the ages. Meaning? Forever. Right? There will be no end. Telos means something that comes to a completion. You renovated a house, you completed it and ran it. You uh, wrote a sentence, you put a period there. Telos means something that comes to, you completed it. You did a load of laundry, you dried it, you hung it up. Bang, done with the laundry. His kingdom will never come to a completion. It is eternal. Number two, the planet Earth is not, it's eternal. Psalms 104 says, God who laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be removed, olam. While the earth remains, Genesis 8, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, heat, Summer, winter, day, night shall not cease. For those of you who moved here and hoped for a reprieve, huh, suckers. It will not cease. We're going to get cooked every summer here. Okay, you can't get out of it. And if you like, if you like more to get cooked a little more, I can send you a couple of places hotter than here. I and mean, we're not the hottest place. You, you ever heard of Yuma? You ever heard of Death Valley? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Palm Springs? Ah, yes. uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't go there. What is he saying here? It's eternal. See? It will not cease. Genesis 9. God said, this is the token of the covenant which I will make with you. He's talking to between me and you and every living creature. It is Olam. Right? Permanent, everlasting generation. The earth here 
humanity here Not here Now he's talking about the rainbow the bow and the cloud which I will look upon and remember is a olam You didn't know rainbows were eternal What's that mean? Seasons are eternal. Rain is eternal. Rainbows are eternal. Okay, my incredible outfits from Walmart are temporal. <laughs> I feel your depression. Between God and every living creature upon the earth, earth is eternal. Earth will never disappear. Revelation twenty-one. John said, "I saw a new kainos means." Fresh Fresh okay to freshen something up for example before I came up here to teach as a Loving favor to each of you. I go to the restroom and brush my teeth Thank you. Thank you. I should have had series of thank yous thank you. bowing different things <laughs> then as a favor to you For the altar call I have Alloys. <laughs> Why? My breath smells like a bed of roses naturally, but I don't want to take any chances. Caring. Father said, "Feed my sheep." I saw a kainos freshened heaven, or on us. My God, that's amazing. Heaven. That Greek word is where God lives. The heaven of heavens. And a new earth, gay earth. It's not gay homosexual gay in Greek means the planet earth, right? The first Protoss that means the first one in a line of things this one first one in line The first heaven The one we have now and the first earth the one I'm on standing on right now is going to be freshened or changed pro means to change from one condition to another not to disappear Am I, am I explaining this right? Uh, there was no more sea. Wow! In the in eternity, after God restores the planet to its original perfect state, there's no more ocean. It's all habitable, gorgeous, plush, Garden of Eden type situation. We got rivers flowing and different things. They're not too interested in your future kingdom, Lord. Number three, how about this one? This one's eternal the kingdom of Jesus Christ Isaiah chapter 9 says to us a child is born a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder And it says his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty God Prince of peace beautiful and of the increase of his government Isaiah 9 there will be and he will sit on the throne of his father David to order and establish it with just judgment and justice and henceforth Olam It's eternal it never ends the kingdom of Christ never ends on this earth Never and Yahweh will perform this it says uh, Daniel 2 in the days of the kings shall God the God of heaven set up his kingdom and he will never it will never be destroyed the kingdom will not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all the kingdoms, and it shall stand alam indefinitely. Same thing. Daniel 7. Uh, I saw in the night visions, behold, like a son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days. If you've ever read the book of Enoch, you'll see that in there mentioned several times. And they brought him for him, and there was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. For his dominion is a alam, indefinite, it goes on indefinitely or forever, dominion which shall not pass away and alam. It will never be removed and it will never be destroyed meaning that 
it's eternal Your future is very bright Luke 1 The angels describing Jesus before he was born and he says he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest The Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David. He shall reign over the house of Jacob I own into the ages and of his kingdom there shall be no tell us it will never come to a completion it's eternal it never ends never ever that's what it's saying I'm just reading it Revelation 11 the seventh angel sounded there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ he's talking about Yahweh and Yahshua, correct? And he shall reign what? I, I own, I own. Now he's doubling up on it, trying to get the person to, he's overemphasizing it, into the ages upon ages, ages upon ages, meaning never ends. There's no ending to it. Uh, how about number four? Guess who, guess what else is eternal? You're looking at your are you looking at that guy over there or that guy you have seen an eternal being sitting right over there It says here in Daniel 7 The prophet said the Saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom Alam indefinitely Even forever indefinitely and ever indefinitely. What's he doing there? He's going into overkill that God set this whole earth up for you the devil stole it and father's taking it back and handing it to you Daniel 7 the kingdom the dominion the greatness of the kingdom under the whole of heaven shall be given to the people of the Saints of the Most High that would be all y'all whose kingdom is a alarm goes on indefinitely and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Hey, you're you're with the in crowd. You're on the in, you, this is an inside job. And you're in it. Yeah. That's right. First John chapter five. God has given unto us Ionius. Who's us? All y'all. He has given to us. Eternal everlasting life, and the life is in the Son. Thank God. He that has the Son has eternal Ionius life. He that does not have the Son does not have eternal Ionius life. These things I've written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, this is a restricted verse, however. Testuo, as you know, is the Greek verb to believe, and it's someone who is living an active, faithful life for Christ, not someone who just believes here and thinks he's a good guy. It's an active believer, testuo, those who believe. It's a verb. Okay? So he says, the believers, true believers, you may know that you have Ionius everlasting eternal life. Paul went through staggering amounts of beatings and everything, but he overcame it all because his mind and his understanding and his spirit was here. He knew this was a seasonal period and someday he would be home. And in fact, in one uh, situation, he said, I'd rather go home. But because I love you, us, I hope it was us, but I love you, them, back then, because of his love for people, he said, I'm staying here longer. Remember that? That's fantastic. Wow. First John 5. God has given us eternal life in the Son. And if we are active believers, 
you have this eternal life is yours and you will know you have it okay lukewarm care uncaring carnal christians flip back and forth am i saved am i not saved did i blaspheme am i ill or did i lose my salvation i can't feel god they flop around all over the place no he's not talking about the flopping christians he's talking about the believers here they know they have eternal life see the difference flopping carnal lukewarm backslidden goofed out cracked out potted out christians don't know they have eternal life. They're questioning it. There's doubts in their mind Believers who are actively living here know they have eternal life John uh, 17 as you have given him Jesus is talking about himself Father gave him exousia authority over all flesh that he should give eternal Ionius forever life to those you have given him who are the ones who God has given to him are they people they just God picked out and said you know what you're going to heaven hell for you heaven burning <laughs> You're in purgatory. Okay, cut the crap. The person that God has given to Christ are the ones who receive God's offer. Every person who receives the gospel, no matter who they are, and everybody's eligible, that's the person Father gives to the Son. There is no pre screening, you go to hell, you go to. That's all a false doctrine, it's all a pack of lies. Everything is your free will. And if you say yes to Jesus, Father hands you to Jesus, and you have eternal, everlasting, never-ending life. Ionius, it's yours. You are part of the in group. See, when you were in high school, you were ugly. You were, you were not in the in group. Remember? I should have been in the group because I had this huge mind and great personality, but I had these zits. And I couldn't get rid of them. It was awful. I started using gas on them. That made it worse. I was desperate, but I no, and they come up quick. I mean, it was spooky. You know, you'd go in the bathroom, you sneak in there, and you clean your face off. You're always cleaning your face if you got zits. <laughs> Raise your hand if you. What you do? You go in the bathroom, and yet then you, I had excess oil, and then I had these zits popping out, and it's embarrassing. Kids are embarrassed over that stuff, and then other people, you know, they make fun of you. They point out your zit, and sometimes they'll grow up fast on your face, and it's really spooky because you go back in the bathroom. Oh my God, where would that come from? It's almost like you're alien morphing into some some being. It's weird. See, but when you have these zits on your face, you can't get any girls, so you reject them. Turn your self esteem sinks. See, now if you're like Rick and you're a jock and people do your homework for you and you don't have any zits, dude, you got the gals lining up. Okay, but the rest of us we don't have that kind of life Let's get back to something valuable John 17 Jesus said I Have authority God gave him authority over all flesh Sinners saints it don't matter father said hey, I'm giving everything son to you And he gives out Ionius eternal life for everyone Romans 2 to them that who by patient continuance here's Paul again Pupomone means endurance. See, Christianity in America is a sprint. You gotta, you gotta get past this crappy stuff, and then sprint to church. Then you get into your Hillsong thing. Hallelujah! You get pumped up a little bit. Then you go back to your miserable life, and it sucks. And you just take a dive, and you're crashing. No, Christianity is not a sprint. It's a, it's a marathon. See, and Paul learned. This was a seasonal marathon. A marathon start here and they end here. See, he ran his race and he finished his course. Christianity is not a sprint. No Christian, nobody can sprint through Christianity. It's impossible. You'll burn yourself out. You'll never make it. It's a marathon. You need rest periods. You've got to understand your endurance. You've got to get training. It's a long process, he's saying, okay? And you're not perfect overnight and God gives you the grace 
through this marathon to make it Okay, this isn't a sprint Hupomone means endurance by patient continuance patient endurance in well-doing agathos means good works see Christian Christians they, they want to serve the Lord for a while, but when the devil sees you serving the Lord, then he cranks up the kick your face in button. And then he starts putting the pressure on you. And then the, most Christians in America, 99% 90, 90 of them, they collapse. Oh my God, I'm serving God. Things should be going perfect because they got sucked into that word of faith crap. Then they got sucked over to prosperity. They're so jacked up they can't even see straight. So they think, how come everything's not going great for me because I'm serving God? Well, you idiot, there's an adversary out there who's looking to finish you every second he gets his hands on you. This is a marathon. This is a war, you gutless, lukewarm Christian. Stand up and fight back and ride the thing out. I just, I just, I just heard my wife click off the YouTube. She doesn't, she doesn't like it when I yell. She gives her a kind of a freaky thing. You see, you got to be patient in doing good works because Paul knew that even though nobody thanked him here, even though these people betrayed him, even though these people turned their back on him, he had an eternal weight of glory. All of his good works were being stored up as treasures in heaven. He had no problem with it. In American Christianity, oh, you don't appreciate what I have yet? Well, I'm going to quit my job. I'm just going to quit. I should have stayed with the Mormons. See, Christians collapse like nothing here. Paul said, hey, don't. Whoa, this is a marathon. Chill yourself out. Pace yourself. If you do something for God that's good, don't worry about if nobody likes it. Father saw it. He made a note of it. It goes on your account. We'll get to that in a minute. See? You gotta be you gotta have endurance to be in the ministry. Okay? People want to get in the ministry sometimes for ulterior motives. The devil's holding his guts while you're going in. He's laughing his guts up. Because he's just got this waiting for you, then he's got that, and you'll be flat on your back in no time. What was he going there? He's doing good works, but he wasn't seeking glory here. He was seeking it here. Because he was looking for what? What you should be looking for, immortality. Aftharsia. It means he was leaving this corrupt world and temporal world into a world of incorruption and immortality see so you can endure somebody not liking you here if on your mind is immortality here if you think this is all there is to it you're going to be in a depression you're going to get beat up you're going to get sunk you're going to quit you're going to file a complaint you're going to gripe and moan your anointing is going to fall out of you it's not going to work See, but if your mind's here, you can endure stuff you can't even believe and still make it. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Why? It's Ionius. It's eternal life. He always had his mind on the big picture. The big picture is this life of ours is seasonal. And if you're an older person like me, your season's running out a little shorter than hers. But it doesn't matter. Everybody's thing is seasonal it's temporal but what we're looking at is eternal immortality so if you know you've got this you can take a loss here and it won't bother you you're not going to fall apart here because somebody don't like you because father likes you eternally This is a good sermon for marriage. All right, to them that are contentious, though, and don't obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, this system changes, doesn't it? And he mentions four things here. They get what in eternity? Thumos, God's rage. Or gain, God's anger. Philipsis is pressure. Pressure, tribulation. What's that from? Satan. If you compromise your Christian faith, the demons will spot it in a, in a microsecond, 
and they'll be working on sowing and reaping for you So you're sitting there going how come my prayers aren't getting out? Well, you got this little pocket a couple pockets over here of Sin that nobody else sees nobody sees it. It's everything seen in the spirit world Nobody gets away with anything and what anguish Stena Korea, what is that have you ever met somebody where they have all kinds of stuff go wrong all the time. I mean, it's they're always falling down. They're always getting hurt. They're getting laid off. Their money, to, everything seems to just constantly. What kind of person is that? I, he just told you. That kind of a person, everything falls apart on. I've seen people with calamity curses. If you go back up the family tree, I say, hey, listen, was, you, was your granddad or your dad? Did that? Oh, yeah. Everything they touched went to crap. Well, that sounds like a family curse. Yeah, it can happen. And it's right there. Upon every soul of man that does what? Katergodzomai. Puts in work or effort. Or energy toward what? Yes, that's the law of sowing and reaping. <clears throat> the devil can't just smash you like a bug. He'd love to, but he just can't. He needs your help. So he needs you to chip in with some sin, some negative words, some lies, something like that. So he's got something to work with. Hey, stop cheating the guy. Just start sinning, man. Drop your drawers, run your mouth, cheat like crazy, watch stuff you shouldn't watch. Go ahead, say it, because the devil is high-fiving. Thank you, he's saying. I'm lying, he never thanks anybody. He just blasts your face in. He doesn't thank a soul. Keep screwing up, keep sinning, work at it. Don't just be casual about it. Get in there and pound it out, and the devil will then pound you out. Lord, you get that information. Dude, I just read it. <laughs> Galatians 6. He that sows to his flesh shall of his flesh reach for Thora. There we go. Things decay. Things fall apart. Correct? You show to the, sow to the Spirit and you get what? Ionius. Everlasting. Never ending. Eternal. Life that never ends. Isn't that great? Here's corruption. Now, here's a picture of you soon. No offense. You get into the grave there, and your body decays. Phthora. See that? Now, that's one ugly person, but they used to be GQ. But the same person is now, there it is. Everybody in glory is GQ. Everybody wears great outfits like me. Everybody looks like this. It's unbelievable. Don't you see it? Paul said, I, I'm, this is decaying. This is deteriorating. My inner man is leading me here, renewed day by day. Titus 3. Being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs to the hope of, same Greek word, there it is, eternal life. Now, that doesn't sound right, does it? No, but look at it this way. All right? Let's take sanctification. All right? Let's take eternal life. Well, there's other things we could take. Well, let's just look at those two. These are bifurcated concepts. See? When you're born again, your spirit man is instantly sanctified to perfection. Perfecto. But the rest of you, your soul, with your emotions, your mind, your thoughts, your will, your uh, uh, conscience, all that stuff is sanctified in process over time. As you study to show yourself approved in the God, a workman that means not to be ashamed, as you walk by faith, not by sight, as you become an overcomer of trials and tribulations, the other part of you is sanctified in process your mind is renewed over time correct so sanctification is a bifurcated concept 
eternal life is the same. I have Ionius right now. I have eternal life right this second as I'm speaking to you. But I don't have the completion of eternal life here in, in glory, in immortality. So I have a hope of the finished product of eternal life. As I have the hope of the finished product of sanctification. I'm working toward sanctification now. And I will receive perfect sanctification of everything about me in eternity. So he's not saying, I hope I'm saved. That's not it. He knows he's saved. But he's talking about the finished completion part of being saved, which Paul talked about in detail in Thessalonians, where you get your new glorified body and you get to be like Jesus. You've got this fantastic body that never gets sick. It's, it's always healthy. It looks great. You can go in and out of rooms. You can travel. I'm not, all kinds of stuff. I don't even know what it's like. I have no idea. But I know it's better than this stinking thing. <laughs> I can't wait. Don't you see? Eternal life is the same way. It's a bifurcated concept. And I have hope, even though I have eternal life now, I have hope to see the completion of it. The new Jerusalem, my new body, the millennial, the marriage supper of the Lamb, whatever all that stuff is in eternity. I don't know what all that stuff is. I've never seen it. But I, I know it's there because the Bible says it's there. Amen. And so that's how I know it's there. So I have a hope, Paul says, of a complete eternal life in glory, is what he's saying. He wasn't saying, Ma, I'm not sure I'm saved. Am I saved? No, no, he never had that. He knew he was saved. Right? And he had an heir to eternal life. That's what we are. Ionius. It goes on forever. It never dies. John 10. Jesus said, I give them, Ionius, life. They will never perish. Amen. He's talking to you. You have eternal life and you will never perish and no one will ever pluck you out of God's hand. It's impossible. A hundred thousand demons running through the door here and I could not take you out of the hands of God. It's not possible. Now, can you jump out of his hands and go? No, it's another Bible study. I don't want to go there. Nobody can take you out of God's hands. That's not going to happen. That is impossible. Period. You will never perish. You are an eternal being. You're a special person. You are a fortunate human being. Romans 6. Now being made free from sin, we have become servants to God. Oops, let's break this down. Eleutheria means to be set at liberty. Uh, similar to having somebody take handcuffs on off you. You ever had a handcuffs on you? Don't raise your hand. Uh, I got a DUI years ago, and I'm in handcuffs. And I, I was so drunk, it wasn't even embarrassing. I thought they were something I bought at jewelry store. But taking handcuffs off you is liberty. In Lutheria, that's what that's what he's talking about. Paul says, by the power of the blood and your repentance and your faith, you are now set at liberty yes. from sin, yes. and therefore you are an eternal being with eternal life living in you now, and the fulfillment of it through the hope of eternal life later. Yes. That's who you are. Yes. You've been set at maybe you've set free, and he says, "Oops." Dulos is a slave. Oh, now here we go again. There's always kind of a downer to these things. He's talking about Christians who are sold out to God, not lukewarm, carnal, indifferent, uncaring, flip-flopping Christian. That's not what he's talking about. A dulos is a slave who follows their master and doesn't question anything he says. If the master says, do this, he does that. If a master said, go there, he goes there. The centurion was the master. He said, hey, I'm a man of authority. I got a bunch of people working for me. I tell them to go here, they go there. I tell them to go there, they go here. They go. That is a born-again Christian. Amen. Carnal, lukewarm, uncaring, uh, imbecilic Christians are questioning things. God, wait a minute. Now, what did God mean by... Repent. Let me think about that. 
God, that's I don't know. Let me get let me check my concordance. <laughs> let me I'm back up. No, that's not a slave. That's that's a huckster looking to get out of something. When father says that, a true born again Christian doesn't question it. They just do it whether they understand it or not. I don't get that, but he, since he said it, and he's got a rep, I got a rep too for being a total loser, so his rep is better than mine. I think I'll do what I'm told. Oh, that's unbelievable. It's a democracy in America. Oh, God, this is unreal. Call Trump. Listen, Christianity is not a democracy, sucker. You don't get to vote. You don't vote. You follow orders or people die. Yeah. Get it? Yeah, you saw it. You saw, I saw it. You follow orders. When God says that, you go, jump. How far you want me to jump? That's what you do as a born again. That's a slave. A lukewarm, uncaring, self-absorbed, self-centered Christian. What? No, hell no. I'm just going to question. Did, did God really say that? Well, hmm, let me think about it. I better, let me call John Hagee. <laughs> you don't call anybody. God's word says, you forgive. You don't go call anybody. You do it. Right. Period. You don't do it. You will pay with your life. Father going to do it? No, the devil's going to kick your face in, honey. You're going to reap what you sow. Slaves do what they're told. Yeah, that's right. God told you to apologize to somebody you haven't apologized to. Oh, that blocks some of your blessings right there. That let the devil in. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, God. You're going to repent of that tonight. You're going to make that call. You're going to send that email. You're going to, I'm sorry. Well, wait a minute. Oh, God. I'm a victim. They were 95% at fault. I don't give a rat's fanny what percent they were at fault, fool. Make the apology for the 5% you were at fault and do what God told you to do. Don't question it. You want a miracle from God? You want blessings from God? Then do what you're told. A doulos, do it. Do it now. My God, my wife is never going to come here again. <laughs> Golly. People who do what they to are told by God reap what? Holiness. To the end, what? Yes. Yeah. See that guy right there? Yep. Liberty. You are free from sin. Don't go back to it. You'll be in bondage again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is <coughs> yes, everlasting eternal. Number five, you want to know something else that's eternal? Yes, sir. Party on. John 6. Do not labor for the meat that perishes, but labor for the meat that It's everlasting. Even though nobody knows what you did or cares what you did or criticized what you did, it doesn't matter. Paul didn't worry about it because he knew it was all here. He would see it again someday. And so you can forgive somebody. You can let something go. You can release it much easier if you know you've already got it in the bag. Well, they don't like my, my sermons and my teaching. They didn't like my ideas for ministry. Or... <laughs> if you've got your eyes here, that doesn't bother you. You don't go home and get bitter and take an offense over it and then bounce over to another church and spread the bitterness over there. You don't do that when you think like Paul. You have a slave's mentality. I was told to do this. I will do it, period. I'll understand it later if I have to. Just do it. Who gives you this eternal life? The Son gave it to him. Whom the God the Father has what? Spargizo. Stamped. See? Every person here, if we had a Holy Ghost x-ray machine up here, 
I don't have one. I've got an order, but if I had one <laughs> and I laid you down and ran you through that What's that tube they run you through? What's that thing in the hospital? Huh? If we had a Holy Ghost MRI machine here right right here We'd lay you down here. We'd run you through there in your spirit man would be a stamp of some kind from the Holy Ghost if you ran a sinner through that Holy Ghost MRI, I mean, there's no stamp there. In the spirit world, demons and angels see through you and see your stamp if you have one, and they know if you don't have one. They know exactly who's saved and born again and who isn't. It's a spiritual stamp. See, it's like a tattoo. Only it's in the spirit, man. John 12. He that is fond of his life, phileo, or likes it, will lose it. This life here, see? No. Paul had his heart on this one. This one was full of hardships and so on, and wonderful works from God and those he loved. But this is what his mind was on the whole time. I forget those things which are behind me. I, really, I look to those things which are before me to the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus my Lord see he released all of his ministry work he released all the beatings and all the persecutions and he had his mind on home here you see people who don't do that who like their existence here and they're very fond of it they will lose their lives you're gonna lose your life here why because it's temporal it's seasonal it doesn't matter who you are, how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter if you're Steve Jobs. The devil can give you cancer and kill you. Okay? It doesn't matter if you're worth 40 or 50 billion. That doesn't matter. You're dead. You went to hell. He that hates his life in this cos cosmos, human world, cosmos, gets this one. That's why Paul said, set not your affections on things of the earth, but set your affections on things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. See? And the demons can look inside you, and so can the Holy Ghost and angels and whoever, and they can see where your heart is. For where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. Your treasure doesn't follow your bank account, it follows your heart. What treasure? Paul's treasure was in the eternal world, not in this world. He'd already lost everything in this world. Wife, kids, status, money. It was all gone. He lost everything. But gained so much more. And it's eternal. Ionius. He that reaps receives wages and gathers fruit to what? Listen, your work that you do for God is eternal. Everything you're doing for him is eternal. Even little things. It's being recorded. It's being put in your eternity. It's yours forever. No one can get there and take it from you. Your treasures are stored in heaven. What treasures? Anything. Big, small, great, loud, whatever it is. It's all being stored. You are a very wealthy person. And you don't know it. You're filthy rich. So that what? Hey, we can all, this one plants, that one sows, God gives the increase. Hey, everybody's happy. Luke 18. Verily I say to you, there is no man that has left house, parents, brothers, wife, children, for the kingdom of God's sake. What's he saying there? Hey, you may not have a wife, you may not have any kids. That's not the point. It wasn't an itemized list. What he was really saying there was what you have given up as personal sacrifices that you have made for God. Okay? That's what doulos slaves do. They make sacrifices. <gasps> sacrifice. Oh my God, that's kryptonite to Christians in America. We have to sacrifice? <laughs> Holy crap, that's unbelievable. Oh God, that's nuts. Oh gee, I want to go back to the Jehovah's Witnesses. <laughs> Listen, everything you have sacrificed for God has been stored in glory, waiting for you on the other side. It's waiting for you. Okay? 
everything you that's important to you every sacrifice you made even if you made he's saying here maybe you made a significant sacrifice for example Paul lost all these things his family his home his wealth his status and life everything was gone right but you will see polyplasium what is that multiple times more when now in this season and in the age to come now if I wanted to whore myself out like a TV preacher what I do here is I create this doctrine oh if you give up your house you're gonna get a hundred houses if you get rid of your parents you get a hundred parents <laughs> if you get rid of your brothers, you get a hundred brothers. So you just whore yourself out and get on TV. That's how you get on TV. If you if you have if you give up your wife, you get whoa. Now the wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> now that prosperity thing went a little too far, Robert. Okay, you get the idea. That prosperity thing is a pack of lies. You don't get a hundred wives. Okay, you're not. Who do you think you are, King Solomon? You're not that stupid. You don't get a husband. Husbands, that's for sure. That's a plague. What are you saying there? If you make significant personal sacrifices for God, you will receive more in this present time. I am living proof of that. Okay, I used to be a multi-millionaire. I had all kinds of chicks. I had all kinds of phony friends. I had. A, I have seen so many miracles and so many people heal. I, I'm so much happier now. I got out of that sinful, rotten, stinking life. No money and houses. Yeah, no, that stuff's all gone. But I'm I have gotten so much more now, it's not even funny. Why? Because my emphasis changed, things I value change, my character changed, everything's different. That's what he's talking about here. And it says. Luke 18. Verily I say to you, there is no man that's left his house, parents, brethren, wife, children, or kingdom of God's sake, right? That will not receive much more now and here to boot. Yeah. Now it doesn't make any sense. Paul had all these sufferings, but it does make sense. He had all these incredible spiritual benefits no one else has ever had. Correct? So he had manifold more, polyplasian, multiple more, multiplied more. Spiritually, he had. Physically, no, that was lost. That doesn't mean that yours is, that's going to happen to you. I'm not saying it is. I'm just illustrating what's going, the point, using him as an example. God's not going to call you to lose everything. I'm not saying he is or isn't. It's none of my business, but I'm saying in this particular case, that's what happened. And he had so much more. I am the resurrection and the life, John 11. This is the most important verse in all of the Bible, New Testament and Old Testament. It's the number one verse in the Bible. Here it is. He's talking about Lazarus. And here's the greatest verse in history. John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He that pistuo, remember, not a casual, lukewarm, no, a pistuo, somebody who actually lives what they believe, though they were dead, paknesto means, is a Greek verb, this was mistranslated, somebody who gets killed is what he's saying. Does that make sense? It, it kind of doesn't though he were dead that doesn't what he's saying here is you're living now But if you get killed is what he's saying should you get killed? You will still be alive. What's he talking now? He's talking spiritual See You're not talking about your body if somebody shoots you in the head you're dead He's not, he's not talking about that Whoever lives who's alive now and pistuo again an active by a believing Christian will never die. Do you pistuo believe that?
honesty and Paul did so he was able to suffer t persecution and tribulation put it aside and stay focused on the high calling of God in Christ if you do the same thing the same thing will happen to you you will no longer be getting upset at anything that happens to you good or bad because your eyes are not there your eyes are here because you're no longer fond of this life see you now have an eternal life you're focused on and you can't wait to get there okay now you can't speed the process up it's a different Bible study mark chapter 9 whoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ will not lose their reward translation even the little things you do for God I've been stored in your account your treasures in heaven and when you transfer over Paul didn't see it as a death he saw it as a transfer he just moved into another dimension another state that's how he looked at it he didn't see it as a dreadful thing he saw it as a thing to celebrate he done backflips why because all that hard work he put in he just let that go kept working hard kept on believing and now all of the things he did are his in glory He's got to be fabulously wealthy. What he had on this earth before he became a Christian, dung. He said, I count it as dung. All my degrees, all my authority, all the public acclaim I had, all my great family, all the money I had, a multimillionaire. I can I consider that poop. That's right. Spanish caca <laughs> God loving Paul even knew Spanish that's amazing they didn't even have Spanish back there now that's an anointing listen what's he trying to say to you look at a little thing you do to somebody a hug a kiss an encouragement whatever it is a little thing nobody notices it nobody cares father saw it father cares he saw it it goes on your account in glory you're in a perfect spot right now. You're a born again Christian. You are doing great. Amen. Filthy rich people. That's number six. The nation of Israel is eternal, isn't it? Isaiah 59 says that my covenant with them says, says Yahweh, Jehovah, my spirit is upon you, and my words I put in your mouth shall not depart out of your depart out of your mouth or out of your seed or out of the mouth of your seed seed for Olam. Eternity. Psalms 125 if you're a Palestinian here tonight, you like, hey, I don't know what to say to you. You're not getting that land <laughs> And it's, it's got nothing to do with America America someday will forsake Israel We are not going to support them to the end. We're out America is going to turn on us. everybody is doesn't matter Listen friend if everybody turns on you. It doesn't matter. You got the Holy Ghost. You have the advantage And I mean the Holy Ghost is so powerful. Check this out. Your mother-in-law can come stay with you. <laughs> and if you keep your heart here, not even a mother-in-law can shake you here. That's, I'm not even joking. That's a bold statement. That's a bold statement. That took some guts to say that, but I did it. I said it. My uh, mother-in-law doesn't watch these. They don't she doesn't watch this stuff, so I'm free there. But Olam means eternity, it's eternal. And in addition, what else is eternal? Oh god, gross! Oh boy, now <clears throat> let's check it out real quick. This is the bad part, I want to get through it fast. The Hebrew word here is sheol. There, the Greek word is hottest. Some people are, in English they pronounce it Hades. But it's actually hottest. Uh, here, Gehenna in English is pro pronounced Gehenna and Tartarus. These are the four uh, words used to describe hell. Now, if you look at the King James Bible, we've got a problem here. This word here, Sheol, means hell, hell, hell. 32 times in the King James Bible, unfortunately, why they did it, I have no idea. They translate it as a grave or pit. Okay, so when you read the verse, 
it doesn't translate right grave is something you dig and put somebody in hell is in the center of the earth where the sinners go so there's a problem with the King James Bible they corrected most of it in the new King James anyhow Gehenna is the lake of fire okay and Tartarus is the portion of Sheol or Hades where the fallen angels went to be punished is a section for angels Evidently humans don't go there, but again, I've never been down there. So I don't exactly know what goes there <clears throat> But I'm trying to make heads or tails out of it from the text I'm doing the best I can Matthew 18 if your hand or foot offends you cut it off cast it from you Cast is the Greek word balo it means throw Cut your hand off throw it. It's better to go through life coloss limping or an amputee, kulos, is an amputee. It's better to go through life like that, he says, uh, rather than having two hands, two feet, to go into what? Same Greek word. Okay? Everlasting and eternal in the King James Bible are, is the same Greek word. So either they're interchangeable. Why they did that, I don't know. What's Jesus saying there? Should you cut your hands if you don't know? What he was trying to emphasize was that the horrors of hell and carrying your sin into eternity without the blood of Christ is so horrible that it's better to cut your limbs off if they're causing you to sin. If you're a thief, you're going to go to hell. So it's better for you to cut your hands off and stop stealing than it is to face judgment and go to hell. It's better for you, is what he was. So what he was saying was, no, don't go do that, but. I'm showing you the emphasis of the severity of what you're doing here. Hell is so horrible that cutting your limbs off is better than going to hell. And you say, well, nowadays that's no big deal. You get a prosthesis. That's true, but back then there weren't any prosthesis. So, and everybody did manual labor. They were farmers, they were laborers. So if you cut your hand off, you were not only in trouble, you had no job. You couldn't work. You starved. You became a beggar. So what he's saying there means more then than it means now. See, I could cut my foot off and get a prosthesis. They have prosthesis now that you can go mountain climbing and run marathons with. Have you seen them? They're absolutely fantastic. I love all that stuff. I used to work with the disabled for years. Anything to help a disabled person, I'm, I'm like a thousand percent behind it. That's great. This Verse doesn't seem to make much sense now, but when he spoke it 2,000 years ago, it made dramatic sense. People were like, cut your hand off. My God, I'm going to be poor the rest of my life. You mean that's worse than going to hell? No, it's better. Cut your hand off because hell is beyond horrible and it never ends. Matthew uh, 18. Ready? If your eye offends you, Pluck it out again. It means so much more then than it does now, right? It is better for you to enter into life with one eye than having two and to be ballow thrown into hell. Hell is somewhere in the center of the earth, the Bible says, and no one ever goes there voluntarily. No one ever goes to hell by themselves. Even on judgment day, they're not going to hell. Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angel. The Bible says the, the people are not going. They are thrown in. Nobody's going to go to hell on their own. Are you crazy? You'll do anything to get out of it. But in eternity at judgment, you can't get out of it. Angels are powerful beings. They're throwing these sinners into hell. There's nowhere to run to be cast thrown into the lake of fire Gehenna There it is everybody's thrown in nobody just go. Oh, you're right. I sinned. I did <laughs> Nobody does that the horror of it the panic the fear is paralyzing. I mean, I can't even imagine what's going on there Matthew 25 then he shall say to those on the left 
depart from me you cursed into what? Same Greek word Ionius prepared for the devil and his angels. That's the killer about this horrible thing No one was ever supposed to go to hell Hell was prepared for the devil and his angels that means that it had to have been prepared before Adam was created Why because Satan fell before then? Hell already existed before Adam amazing Matthew 25 hey, we ignored this person. We wouldn't help that one. We didn't do this Hey, when you didn't do any of that stuff you were not doing it to me Remember and he said that's why they went to hell. They will go away to what? Everlasting Ionius Punishment Colossus is the Greek word for what they used to use for punishing prisoners that's, that's what prison was supposed to be for. They called it rehabilitation and punishment. And then the rehabilitation disappeared over the years and it was just punishment. But the point is, hell is a place of eternal punishment. If God did not spare the angels of sin but cast them down to Tartarus into chains of darkness reserved for judgment. Remember that verse in first Peter Here's the one in Jude the angels which did not keep their first estate, but left their own habitation He reserved in everlasting Adidas means Something you have to go through forever Something you have to endure forever Until what day the day I just mentioned the day of judgment and they go to the lake of fire Revelation 20 the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone the Iran is what? Sulfur that's amazing science has proven that the core of the earth is loaded with sulfur When a volcano goes off it's coming from down there it there's what now how would they know there's sulfur there? Check this out where the beast and the false prophet are they were thrown in the lake of fire a thousand years before this so they've been burning for a thousand years when Satan is tossed in at the end of the millennium. Well, if you haven't burned up in a thousand years, you ain't burning up. I'm not a fire expert, but that if you can't burn up in a thousand years, you're in some trouble. You got another thousand to go. Okay, what do they do there? What is hell for? Basanizo, it's a place of torture. Greek word for torture. And how long does it last? Ice, eon, eon, ever into the ages. Forever and ever. Satan will never get out of hell. The, the fallen angels, will never, the demons will never get out of hell. Okay? People who have rebelled against God will never get out of hell. They don't burn up. They don't disappear. They stay there forever. And let's close it with this then. Here's the final wrap up. Revelation 21. God will wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death there no more sorrow no more crying neither shall there be any more pain now this is an incredible miracle waiting for you when you get to heaven you know that here's why everybody is going to have somebody they love friend family whatever who ends up in hell everybody's going to have it it's frightening there's no way you can live in eternity knowing that your relatives are burning in hell or your mother or your dad whatever it is I mean that is a torturous concept so somehow supernaturally and miraculously God removes all sorrow and sadness from us how's that work I don't know I don't really know I don't I don't have all them answers but I do know that you are headed for a land on the other side in eternity with no more sickness no more suffering no more pain, no more sorrow, no more misery. It's all over when you get to the other side. Paul used that concept to get through all the tribulation and all the suffering he went through, and you can use it too. There'll be no more pain in eternity. And the former things are parerkomai, set aside. And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new the heavens are going to be freshened and new renewed 
you're going to get a new supernatural body you're not going to have this crappy thing anymore your lousy job is you won't even remember you worked at a lousy job your mother-in-law what mother-in-law dude when you get on to the other side it is so glorious over there you don't remember this crap down here you don't remember it anymore it's so great I know that's true because I've had people you know go on vacation and completely forget about their family. They don't remember them. They're on vacation. Well, if vacation is that good, you can forget your family. Heaven has got to be like, what fam? What happened? I, I don't recall. I make all things new. You are headed for a brand new world. What does Jehovah say? What's his final words to us? Yahweh. What does he say? Your heavenly Father. Write these things. From the faithful and true one he sure is it's done I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end that's the same title given Jesus they both had the same same title I will give to him that is thirsty of the fountain of the water of life freely oh now there's the caveat there the lukewarm the gun carrying the indifferent don't get this you have to be thirsty for the things of God you got to become a God seeker you got to be a God hunter and you can't just casually sit there and do nothing it's not going to work for you you're not going to make it you got to be thirsty for a touch from God you got to be desperate to give God to move in your life if you are you get what fountain of life freely he that oh gosh here's another one Overcomes shall inherit all things. Overcomers. Overcoming Christian. This is a marathon, not a sprint. You got to have patient endurance to make it. You can't take a couple shots at it and collapse. Okay? Paul saw that. This thing is a marathon. I've run my course. I've kept the faith. So God has laid up for me a crown of righteousness. And not for me only, he said, for all those who love his appearing. That is you all. You're looking for his appearing. You are not a lukewarm, gutless, cowardly, nincompoop Christian. No. You're going to become a slave of God. When he says this, you just do it. You don't even ask. Father doesn't have any recommendation. I have him as a counselor. Yeah, I make recommendations. Well, in this marriage, I would recommend you stop hitting her with bats. <laughs> I'd recommend you stop stabbing him with knives. I'm just recommending marital assistance. Those are recommendations because I'm a counselor. God doesn't have recommendations. He has never given a recommendation. He just tells you, do it. Don't do it. Why? Because I said so. That's how it works. This isn't a democracy. You're not voting. They voted for Trump, but they voted for Clinton. Which crook did you vote for? You don't vote in the kingdom of God. There's no voting. There's no Democrats or Republicans. There's no blacks or whites. There's no bonds are free and there's no men or women you are all one in Christ this is like politics politics is evil it's wicked oh well there's some Christian politicians oh really there's oxymorons too that's an impossibility you can't be a politician and be a Christian you can't do any job that requires you to lie all the time what are you nuts you crazy Part of my job description, I have to lie. Whoa! Hold on here. Father said, thou shalt not lie. Whoa, wait a minute. In the Christian. Yeah, you're an American Christian. They go to a place I just went over earlier. Burning down there. Why? Because they negotiated a deal with God. Well, look, I don't know. Should it, did he really mean that? I mean, I don't know. I was born this way. I... <laughs> He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he will, they will be my son and my daughter. Oh, wow. 
What's that? Once again, hope, son, daughter, son, daughter, son, daughter. Now you are a child of God, but you have a hope of being an eternal son and daughter of God with all the eternal benefits of immortality. It's a bifurcated concept. You're rejoicing now that you're God's child, but you're rejoicing here as well because there's so much more for you as a child of God if you live the life of an overcomer. But, he says, these people are not are going to go to eternity, but they don't go there. They go there. The fearful. That's the Greek word delia. It means cowards. Cowards, unbelievers, people who are, live abominable lifestyle, murderers, whoremongers, pornos, so it's promiscuous males, sorcerers, pharmakia, witches and warlocks that use drugs and potions, idolaters, and what? All politicians. <laughs> All, it says. Where do they go? Oh, they have a special place in heaven. Everybody's going to heaven. <laughs> they shall have their part in what? Eternity in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Sulfur. There's no question. It's the only matter of time till I get kicked off YouTube and Facebook. You can't share this kind of material and not eventually get caught. They will get rid of me. But they're not going to get rid of the Bible because I'm here today and gone tomorrow. God's word is eternal. Yeah. Paul knew he was going to die and was looking forward to it. He also knew there was a second death. There's two deaths. And that's the one he avoided. And every born again Christian, every person on this earth can avoid the second death. And that's what it is. Gehenna. Gehenna. The lake of fire. And it is what? It's eternal. It never ends. None of those things are ever going to end. And that means you ain't going to end. You are an eternal being. You will never die. And if you will overcome and run your marathon, you are so wealthy you can't conceive nor believe it. Right now you're wealthy. In eternity, you will receive that wealth. Am I wealthy now? No. You're not going to get material things and money now. It's not going to happen. In eternity, you are fabulously wealthy. Yes. Fabulously, ridiculously, absurdly wealthy. You are rich beyond comprehension because now and then you will have the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. So any sacrifice you make now is well worth it in the end. It's very similar to a 401k. You have the money taken out, right? It's pre-tax dollars. It's put in an account for somebody to lose for you. <laughs> and then when you retire, you draw the money out, it's then taxed, correct? And then you use it to retire on. Oh, don't you see it? Can't you see it? You give a cup of cold water, you do something for God, you repent, you do what he tells you to do, you do what he asked you to do, you quit doing what he told you to stop, you obey, you listen, you serve like a slave, you listen and obey regardless of what, what you think about it, you just do it because he told you. You live like that, and those riches are stored in glory. You can't conceive nor believe it. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard. Yeah. The things God has prepared for you. Yeah. Unless you are lukewarm, carnal, casual Christian, living a non-overcoming life. Why? Because you are a sprinter. You serve God in spurts. Brother Mike, I've heard it a thousand times in counseling. Listen. Brother Mike, I used to be on fire for God. I've heard that so many times. I used to do this and that and that and this for God. Oh, and now I can't even hear from God. I need, I need help. I can't. I don't know. What happened? 
listen, you were sprinting. This thing's a marathon. Okay? You're going to have ups and downs along the way. You're going to need to rest here. You're going to need to fight here. You're going to need to work here. You're going to have to run here. You're going to have to run forward, sideways, backward. Whatever you got to do, it's a marathon, not a sprint. When you sprint, you always burn out. Everybody burns out. It takes knowledge and wisdom to be successful. Knowledge alone leads to failure. That's right. If you ever talk to somebody and quotes the Bible backwards and forwards, if you take a close look at them, they're usually spiritually useless. That's right. Nobody gets healed. Nobody gets delivered. Nothing. Why? It's all up here. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these verses tonight. I don't know if they enjoyed it, but I sure did. I loved it. Thank you for being so generous and loving and giving. Thank you for, I don't know what's up there waiting for us, but it's spectacular to say the least. But there's some people here tonight who are not going to make if they do make it into heaven, their rewards will be virtually nothing. Why? Because they were sprinting. They weren't running a marathon. They didn't have patient endurance. They're, they let their fire, their little lamps burned out. They got focused on the temporal world. They lost sight of the eternal world. They got focused on the carnal end of it, not the spiritual end of it. And the devil caught them and he made them sick and they stayed sick and they couldn't get healed why they wouldn't change and tonight they are going to change I'm prophetically speaking that some people like prophetic stuff so I give them prophetic stuff tonight you are going to change and you're going to continue after you change to add to your treasures in heaven for moth and rust do not corrupt, and thieves do not break through and steal. That's what you're going to do. You're going to forgive all these people that don't like you. You're going to cut them and let them go and give them to God. You're going to repent of that secret sin, the besetting sin in your life. You're going to repent of it tonight. Because you saw what I put up here, God's Word. This wasn't Mike. This was God's Word. You are staring at eternity. You are already part of it. You will never die. But when this life is over, your abilities to add to your treasures and glory end. It only is what you do in this life. There's a temporal world. There's an eternal world. And Paul showed us tonight the difference between the two. So right now, raise your hand if you need prayer tonight. You have lost sight of the marathon and you were sprinting and the devil caught you in a moment where you were exhausted everybody who sprints exhausts themselves and when you're tired the devil always attacks when you're weak when you're pooped he hits you when you're low and you were going too hard too fast for God outstripping your wisdom using whatever knowledge you had and you burned out and you got caught by the devil discouragement Sadness You lost your anointing you pray and it, you can't sense anything anymore. You know what I'm talking about And you want healing tonight just raise your hand over here anybody in this section you're free Anybody over here One, one two, okay great. That's a that's a great number father God you saw those hands raised I know you saw them you see everything sweet Holy Spirit nothing gets past you Nothing at all. But love never gets past you either. Every person that raised their hand is a desperately loved person. I know that. Because the Bible says it and everything the Bible says I believe. And I don't question it. And the things I do question, I ask you to forgive me and help me repent of it. Right now, every person that raised their hand is going to repent tonight. They're going to repent in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
All right now come up here and see me. I want to pray with you again. Right. You raised your hand You were sprinting and you, you should have been in a marathon And you got discouraged you became lukewarm You let the devil take pot shots at you when you were weak and you were tired Come on up my ministry team is going to come up here just real quickly come up and close your eyes here Thank you, Jesus those of you who have to leave, I love you tonight. Thank you for coming for the teaching. Thank you for your donations. They're on the doors in the back. God bless you. Tonight, the Holy Spirit wants to take you from the temporal world to the eternal world. That's what he's looking for. He wants you to become a slave of God. And that's really what you want. I know that word slave has a bad sound to it in our society. But spiritually, it is the greatest spot to ever be in. You couldn't get in a better spot than being a slave to the Holy Spirit. It couldn't get any better. When he speaks, you just do it. You don't even question it. You just do it. And that's really what you want to do. And that's why you raise your hand. Because you, do, you want help and you want to change. You're, you raise your hand. You were being sincere about it. Because you care. You do care. And the Spirit of God looks right in your heart. We can't look in your heart, but He can. Okay? Now, you've been sick for a long time, hurt for a long time, can't get healed, physically ill, emotionally ill, mentally ill, addictions, sinful habits, stupid behaviors, ignorant attitudes, asinine, imbecilic relationships with others. That ends tonight. You're going to repent of it tonight, aren't you? All right, close your eyes and let's pray together. Father God, right now, I need to tell you how sorry I am for what I've done. Just tell me. Speak it out. I'm so sorry, Lord, for what I've done. I hurt so many people. I hurt myself. I've hurt my family. I've hurt people at church. I've took offenses. I've been angry. I've been bitter. I've been fearful. I've been scared. I saw that list, Lord, you put in Revelation there. The fearful, the abominable, the unbelieving. Oh, my goodness. Help me, Lord Jesus. Father God, please help me. Please help me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I want to repent tonight. I need your help tonight. Please help me. Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. Please help me. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt you. Please help me. I got distracted. I met this person. I met that person. They, they led me off the path. So embarrassed. I got in a relationship I shouldn't have. I fornicated. I did this and that. Oh my God, please forgive me. I took somebody back I should have gotten rid of. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Father God, I'm so sorry for what I did. I used to be on fire and then I became lukewarm, indifferent. I became casual. I became a casual Christian. That's the worst spot to be in. It's so sickening. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, dear Jesus. Help me, dear Lord. Help me right now. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Say that. Thank you, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Please help me. Yeah, just pray right out of your heart. Just like that. Good. Help me, Lord. Please help me, Jesus. Please help me, dear Lord. Please. Please help me. Please help me, Lord. Please help me. I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry I hurt you, Lord. I wasted so many years on carnal things, lusting things, drugs, alcohol, sex, I wasted so much of my time. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, sweet Jesus. I'm so sorry. Help me. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Please, Lord. I need to be healed tonight. I'm so tired of my life. I'm so tired of making the same mistakes over and over again. The same mistakes over and over again. Constantly doing the same thing over and over again. Constantly living with negative thoughts, negative attitudes. Mm -hmm. Constantly, over and over again. Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Heal my anxiety disorder tonight. Heal my fears tonight, Lord. I'm scared of my future. Please help me. Please help me, Lord. Heal my body tonight. I'm scared of my health. I'm scared of wasting my life like I've seen so many other people waste it. I'm so sick of it. Please help me, Lord. Please help me. Please help me, sweet Jesus. Help me, dear God. Help me, Lord. Please help me. 
Forgive me for getting involved in these relationships. I should have never been involved in. I should have never been involved in. Lord, help me. Please help me. Lord. These people led me away from you, not towards you. I married an unbeliever. I dated an unbeliever. I slept with an unbeliever. Something bad happened to me after that. Please forgive me. Spirits got into my brain from pornography and drugs. Now I can't even think straight. Now I can't even think straight. Father, help me right now. Please help me. Help me, Lord. Pray harder. Please help me, Lord. Say it. Please help me, Jesus. Pray harder. Please help me, Jesus. Please help me, Lord. Come on now. Come on. All these horrible disappointments. All these horrible disappointments. All these bad men. All these betrayals. Come on. All this stuff. I want it. There it comes. Come on out. There it comes. There it comes right now. Come on out. Out of that body right now. There it comes. Come out right now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Just repent. Just repent of it. I'm so sorry, Jesus. All these bad men right now. All these fights and arguments and all this stress that has hit me. Oh, God, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. All this adultery. All this fornication. All these drugs. Satan, I command you to come out in the name of Jesus. All this adultery. All these bad men. All these bad decisions. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Every evil man that ever come out right now. Get out of my body right now. Come out of there. Come on out. Come on. The Holy Ghost starting to move. Just relax. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on out right now. Come on. Just repent of them. All these guys. I want all of them out tonight. Every one of them. All of them. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. No, that's a fear spirit. Come on out. Breathe out of your mouth. Come on out of there. Come on out. Come on out right now. Get out of there. Negative thoughts. Lies. Negative thoughts. No, that fear demon is distracting you. Close your eyes. Do what I tell you. Breathe. 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 Abuse. I command you to come out of that body right now. Verbal abuse. Come out. Yes. Verbal abuse. Trashing you. Running you down. Degrading you. Humiliating you. Come on. Come on, Lord Jesus. Heal me. Heal me now. Breathe. 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 There he is. Come out right now. Spirit of fear. There's coming up right there. Come out right now. Spirit of fear. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. There it comes right there. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Every ugly man. All this. All this lust. All this deception. All these lies. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of there. Demon of fear. Come out. Quickly. Come out of your stomach right there. Come out of your stomach right now. There he comes. Keep calling. Go. Come on out. Come on. Just repent. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. There he is. You're coming out right now. You're getting healed right now. Keep going. Come out. Every demon from her husband. Come out right now. Food demons. Go. Food demon. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Don't stop. Come out. There he comes. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come out. Come out, spirit. Come out, spirit. Come on out of there. Come out of that. Do both of these. Come out right now. Come out. Look here. Look here. The negative thoughts. Come out. Fearful. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Lying thoughts. Negative thoughts. Evil thoughts. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Heal. Come out right now. Go, go, go. Come out. Pray harder. Pray harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Satan, come out. Fight harder. Pray harder. Pray harder. Go fight harder. Come on. Fight. Behold, I give you power. Power to tread on scorpions and serpents. Over all the power of the enemy. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing will hurt you. Come on. Nothing will hurt you. Get out of the body. Keep coughing. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Go. Come out right now. Heal. Heal now. Come on out. 
Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Fight harder. Come out, Satan. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out of that body right now. Get out of that body right now. Come out quickly. Hold that. Come out quickly. Guys, said go. Come out of that throat right now. Come out of there right now. Quickly. Go. Quickly. Satan, loose your hold. Quickly. Come out quickly, I said. Come out. Every ugly man will touch your body. Come out now. Go! Get out of there right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Get out right now. You fight harder. You fight for your life. You're worth fighting for. Come out! Come out! You're worth fighting for! Come out! You're worth fighting for! Fight for it! Fight! Come on! Fight for it! Satan, lose your hole! Satan, lose your hole! Come out. Get out of there, buddy. Get out of there. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go! Big yawn, big yawn. Come on. Big yawn. Come out, Satan. Come out, you rotten devil. You keep coughing. Get that body out there. Come on. Get out there. Go. Come out that body right now. Quick. Come out quicker. Come out faster. Come out quicker. Go. Satan, come out now. 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 Come on, sweetheart. All these ugly men got to go. All of them. Come on now. If you sleep with a man, you can pick up a transfer of spirit. And men have been attracted to you all your life. You've been, you've been attracting demon affected men. They're in here. Now come on. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Every transfer of spirit, every moment you spent in adultery, come out right now. You're going to be healed tonight. Just repent of it. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Go! Come out! Get out! Go! Rejection from men. Come out with Adultery, fornication, oral sex, lust, abortion. Come out! Come out! Come out there! Go! Come out! Come out right now! Lord Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me, Father. I want these spirits out of me. I want all these bad men out of me. Help me, Lord. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Back up. Come on out. Come on there right there. There stay right here. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Come out. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come on. Come on. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, come out. Come out of the woman of God. Come out of the woman of God right now. Every ugly man that ever touched your body comes out now. All of them. All these bad men. I'm repenting tonight, Lord. I'm repenting. Get this monster out of my brain. Get him out. Out. Come on, fight. This girl, rejection and low self-esteem. Fear. Come on. Rejection. Everybody rejected me. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares. That's not true. You all love me. I've just committed self to every sin. I've, I've just I've taken people's lives. I've, I've been in a gangster. I've been. I've, now you're in deep trouble now. Listen. I've been. I've manufactured drugs. I, I, I'm David. Now listen, Paul, you tonight. Listen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Bible says that God has chosen people like you 
over loyalty. You know why? Because they have a great testimony later. First Corinthians chapter 1. You're in there. No, you're going to repent right now. You do what I say. Raise your hand. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my satanic life. God, forgive me. Pray harder. There you go. Come on. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy. So sorry. I'm so sorry. I've collected a million demons because of my evil life. I want them out tonight. Satan, you're going to come out of the man of God tonight. God, you got every demon there is. Come on, just repent of it. Come on, just repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Please forgive me. God, forgive me. Help me, Lord. Heal. Help me, Lord. Tonight, I'm not focusing on these demons. I'm focusing on how much I hurt you. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry I hurt you. I'm so sorry I hurt you. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. I hurt myself. I hurt my family. I hurt my loved ones. God, have mercy on me. God, have mercy on me. Help me, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. This guy right here, he's done every single. You look, you look uh, like a daycare worker compared to him. I'm trying to get him to the pit. He's got massive sins. Murder, murder, drugs, everything. Okay. Uh, he's, this guy's done everything. Okay. I'm trying to get him to the pit. Can you help him? Yep. Yep. Just repent. Just repent. Just repent. Just repent. Change. Change. Repent. Repent and change. You're not done. Come out of there right now. Neither are you. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of there right now. Hurry up. No, you're getting healed tonight. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Come out of my body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. There it goes. Keep coughing. Come on out. Come out. Come on. Every minute you spent committing adultery in your past comes out tonight. <laughs> Lust demons. Go. Oral sex demons. Go. Come out of her mouth. Come on out. Perversion. Go. Rejection. Low self-esteem. Go. Right now, go. Evil and wickedness. Go. Evil. Come out. Evil. Come out. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Fight now. Come out now. You fight harder. Come on, just repent of it. Just repent. Repent. Come on. Get out. God, Holy Ghost is here. Just repent of it. Just repent. Just repent. Just change. Get out. Amen. Get out of that body right now. I told you to come out of there right now. Evil. Come out. Evil. Evil. Childhood rejection. Demons from her parents. Go. Come on out. Go. Come out. Lesbian. Come out. Homosexuality. Come out. Sexual perversion. Come out. Pornography. Come out. Incest. Incest. Come out. Incest. Get out of my head. Come on now. 
Oh, stand up. Now, who, who hurts your sweetheart? There's a whole rack of them. My, my, my ex husband. What's his name? Raul. Raul? Oh, take a big breath. Raul. Raul, you come out right now. Come on out of there. All the sorrow, all the sadness, all the abuse. Raul, you cheated on her. Come out of her. Come out of her body right now. Get out of her stomach. Come out of her legs. Come on. There he comes. Here he comes. Keep coughing. Come on out. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come out. Raul, come out. Raul, come out of her body. Get out of there. Raul, come out. Hold that. Come out. Come out, Raul. Fear and terror. Fear. There he is. He's in your head. Come out of there. Come out of her head. In Jesus' name, come out right now. Come out of her head. Abuse. Brainwashing. Mind control. Come out. Go now. Evil. Come out. Evil. Evil. Terror and fear. Terror and fear from abuse. Come out. Come on out. Get out of her head. Terror and fear and rage and hate. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus. Get out. Rage and hate. Come out. Raul, I command you. Come out of him. Raul, come out. Come out. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on. There he comes. There he comes. Raul's coming out now. There he comes, honey. Keep going. Keep coughing. Come out. Come on out. Come out. Come out. There they go. There they go. There they go. Heal me, Lord. Heal me, Lord. What you need to be healed of? I have diabetes, high blood pressure, and arthritis. No, when you when you was young, who hurt you? What did you do? Yeah, I thought he molested you when you was a little kid, maybe. What was his name? Luis. Okay, take a big breath. Big breath. Father God, you see this beautiful woman? She was she, her innocence was stolen from her by her grandfather, Luis. And he hurt her for the rest of her life. And tonight we're for, we are going to forgive Luis. And we're going to cast out his transfer spirit that got in there that's causing this arthritis. Take a breath and blow. Luis, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come on out. Come out. Luis, you child abuser, come out. Luis, you pervert, come out. Luis, come out. Come out of her. Come out of that body. Come out. Luis, come out. Let your tears go. Luis, come out. Come on out. Let your tears go. Don't hold back. Good girl. Don't hold back. Come on. Don't hold back. Come on. Luis, come out of me right now. Say that. Luis, all your demons, all your lust demons, spirit of arthritis, get out of my body right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Where's the pain at? My whole body. Your shoulders. Does this hurt? No. Does that hurt? Does that hurt? He just got healed. Thank you, Jesus. Luis came out. Raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Say it. Let your tears go. Move your legs. Hey, come on. Come on. Lift your legs up. Does that hurt? Does that hurt? Does that hurt? Is it gone? Is it gone? Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. Hey, this lady just got healed of full body arthritis. Arthritis. 
Raise your legs. What's your move? Anita. Anita just got healed. Full body arthritis. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Go. Come on. Come on, play harder. Tell him you're sorry. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Testing. One, two, three, four. Test one, two. Testing one, two. Man, what's your name? What did you come here tonight with? You had arthritis? Full body arthritis? What happened to you over there? Did you forgive your grandfather? You sure? Thank you, Jesus. Did the arthritis leave after you forgave him? It did. This lady sitting right here got healed of full body arthritis tonight. Did every joint hurt? Did all the joints hurt? Where did it hurt at? Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hand. Tell him you love him. Come on. Come on. I love you, Jesus. The Lord Jesus healed me. Brother Mike had nothing to do with it. Come on. Dear God, have mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Glory to God. Thank you for healing me, Holy Spirit. Say it. I forgive my grandfather for molesting me when I was a baby. I forgive him. And I release him. I forgive him and I release him. Hallelujah. This lady uh, sitting right here. How old are you, hon? No, now. She, this lady uh, sitting right here is 72 years old. She just got healed of uh, full body arthritis. It happened right after she forgave her grandfather who molested her when she was a child. And the Spirit of God healed her because she forgave. If you will forgive and you will release the people that abused you, come on. If you will forgive them, if you will forgive them, you will be healed like that lady sitting right there. She got healed of arthritis. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? My kids, just family in general. They rejected you? Yes. Why? I was rejected. Why? 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 Um, just arguments. Uh, not fitting in. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says, Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you and abuse you. If you'll do that, God will remove this pain out of your heart. Pray for him right now. Good. Test one, two, three. What's your name, ma'am? Anita. And what'd you get healed of tonight? I got healed of arthritis. Did you forgive your grandfather that molested you when you were a kid? Yes, I forgive. Did you get healed after you forgave him? Do I feel like I forgave I feel like... Did you get healed after you forgave your granddad? Yes, I did. You're 72 years old? I'm going to be 72. Your knees hurt now? Your shoulders? <laughs> Keep laughing. Go ahead. Keep giggling. Go. The Holy Ghost just hit her. She's giggling. Keep giggling. Keep going. Keep giggling. No one can see you. Keep giggling. She just got healed of arthritis. Thank you, Jesus. Giggle it out. Come on. Keep giggling. Come on. Come on. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My knees are healed. My shoulders are healed. My neck is healed. My back is healed. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, brother. My pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. Appreciate Love it. You. Love you, too. You've been great. Um, yes, I wanted to give you a quick update on what happened uh, last night. So How'd that go? So it went a bit well. So I slept uh, straight uh, almost almost six hours. And, and then uh, I think... Uh, uh, I remember actually for the first uh, unclean sex I mentioned to you, I was actually into that, so my, my heart hurts uh, after that uh, period and I got out of the separation. So uh, I think that that could be something where when you ask uh, that's the reason. Because of, that hurts quite a bit. Ne never happened before, never happened after. So that's uh, probably related to the case, I would think. Because if the heart is not healthy, you can't receive Holy Spirit in full, right? So that's one thing. Second thing is, uh, um, so I, I, I have some scenery related to unclean sex, so I would say that's probably related to the fornication spirit, is that right? And, then, uh, and then so I think I, I need to continue working on that because otherwise it won't happen to me because that just happened after I uh, wake up. So that's the second. And then the third thing is, <laughs> um, let me think. I, I lost the. Uh, I think it's more more related to uh, uh, you know, continuous working or what I was trying to say. And remember, I, I needed to talk about those three things. <laughs> Somehow I. Sorry, uh, I lost my son. So now that perverted sex. Yeah. Did that let let anything in? Uh, what do you mean inside? Did the demon get in? It could. Have been. All right, take a breath. Breathe. Okay, you come out of there, you pervert. Come on out of me. Come out of my body right now. Come out, you pervert. You pervert in the name of Jesus Christ. You unclean spirit of lust and perversion. He hates your guts and he commands you to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. Come on out. He hates you. He hates you right now. Come out. I hate you. you pervert. Sexual per Here he comes. Sexual perversion. Go. There he goes. There he comes. Sexual perversion. Perverted sex. Prostitution. Pornography. Lost. Come out. Come out, everybody. There he comes. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Right now, you pervert. Out. Come on out right now. Go. Get out. Come on out of there. Come out, you pervert. Come out of there. Get out of there, buddy, right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Set. <laughs> come out right now. Go. Yeah, everybody, go right now. Come out. Satan, come out. Satan. Now listen, to get demons out, you cannot casually pray and get spirits out. They will not leave. If you pray casually and you're indifferent about it or you get distracted, the demons will not come out and they will kill you. They're going to kill you. You're not going to make it. Listen to me. I don't know everything, but I know this. If you give the devil the right to stay in your body. If you give the devil the right to stay in your body, 
He will kill you. Demons are murderers. And your sin is what feeds demons. Sin feeds demons. Sin brings death. If you keep sinning, if you won't forgive, if you have bitterness, if you are a victim, you must repent of being a victim. Get out of there. Come on. Get the rest out right now. Come on. Out. Out, sweetheart. You got to get the spirits out. You got to get the spirits out. Because they will come back and haunt you later. They will give you a terminal illness. If you don't believe me, go over to Phoenix Baptist Hospital, Good Samaritan Hospital. Go to any care center anywhere in the Maricopa County. I dare you to go there. You will see people laying in beds who are emaciated. They're terminally ill. Their lives have been literally destroyed. If you don't get these demons out, you're next. You don't get it, do you? You're the next person going to the rest home living with nothingness. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool, saith the Lord. Come on. God is calling you to repent of your sin. Sin feeds demons, bitterness, unbelief, doubt, fear. Fear is a powerful spirit that causes sicknesses. Fear, demons, cause sicknesses. They cause anxiety disorders. They cause cowardice. They cause you to give up. Come on, repent of it. Spirit of fear, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to get out of my body now. Now, thus saith the Lord, if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and keep his commandments and follow his precepts, I will put none of these diseases upon you. I put on the Egyptians, for I and the eternal God who heals you. I am Yahweh Rofka. I am the God who heals. Come on. Repent of your sin, your attitude, your unbelief, your doubt. Confess it and repent of it. Hurry. Hurry before it's too late. Hurry before you end up in the rest home like your grandma and grandpa and your mom and your dad, they're all sick and dying now because they didn't repent. They didn't get the demons out. Come on. Fight back. If you do what's right, the Holy Ghost will come right to you. You got a critical spirit. You nitpick people. Repent of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now listen, now. let's forget about your son right now, okay? Let's pray after me. Dear Jesus, I am so sorry I got involved in anything to do with Native American spiritualism. I apologize and ask you to forgive my parents for being involved in witchcraft. I ask you to forgive me for being involved in witchcraft. Because when I got involved in it, I let demons in my body. And I have a fear spirit in my chest. He's trying to give me a heart attack. He wants to kill me. 
And he's going to kill me if I don't get him out. But Jesus, forgive me. Let your tears go. There you go. Let, let your tears go. Come on. I'm so sorry, Lord. Forgive me. There it goes. There it goes. I'm so sorry, Lord. Forgive me. There you go. Good. Good. Let your tears go, sweetheart. Yes, let your tears go. Love you. Thank you for helping me. Come on, let your tears go. Come on. Let them go. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Don't stop. Keep going. Come out right now. Come out. Forgive me, Jesus. Witchcraft, I renounce you. Sweat lodges, I renounce you. Witch doctor, I renounce you. Medicine man, I renounce you. Native American witchcraft, I bind it and I cast it out. Come out of it. Go now. Come out of her body. Come out of her body. Satan, Lucio. Satan, come out. Satan. Come out. Satan. Yeah. Satan, come out. Native American witchcraft and sorcery. Demons from Mexico, Santeria spirits, medicine man demons, go. Satan, come out. Go. Spirit of fear, go. Native American curses, come off. Curses, come off. Come off. Native American curses, come off. Demons from her son, come out. Demons from her son, go. Right now, go. Come on out. Get out of there. Come on. Come out. Go. Go. Come on, sweetie. Pray harder. You got the Holy Ghost on you. Come out, Satan. Food demons come. Medicine man, I bind your power. No Native American healers, I curse you to failure. Fail in Jesus' name. Healers, come out. Healers, come out. Go. Healers, come out. Right now. Go. Come on out. God, forgive me. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. Come on. Native American spirits, come out of there. Come out. Fear. Fear, come out. Medicine man, come on out. Come on. Out. Come out of there. Come out. Come on, sweetheart. Let your tears go. Honey, let your tears go. Come on. Spirit of God's healing you tonight. If you have a humble heart, you can get healed. People who do not have humble hearts, they always go home sick. They never get healed. People who do not listen and do not change never get healed. It's, it's awful. Tr trust me, I know what awful is. I'm a, I'm a counselor. I see awful every single day. People who do not repent and change, they never get healed. And it's awful. It is awful. Just repent of it. Confess your sin. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God is raising from the dead, you shall be so so delivered. Be delivered. Satan, come out. Satan, come out of my body right now. Atta girl. Good girl. There you go. Tell the devil to come out. These signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick. 
and they shall recover. Come on, sweetie, repent of it. I renounce Native American witchcraft, sorcery, spiritualism. I renounce all of it. Go. Come out. Right now. This woman over here just got healed of arthritis. All her pain. And she was having a heart attack. Her chest got healed. Holy Ghost healing over there. Holy Ghost healing over here. Holy Ghost does all the healings. He's got a special formula, so to speak. He uses the broken body of Jesus to heal. The crown of thorns to heal the mind. And the blood to wash away the sins forever. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given, whereby we must be saved. You cannot get saved with Buddha or Allah or Zoroaster or Mother Mary. There is salvation in no other. None. None in Jesus' name. Did you get healed? What's your name? Karina. What did you get healed of? Well, the diverticulitis in my stomach, and then, and also my uh, my resentment and hurt against my ex-husband, hating him. Raul, yeah, Raul, yeah, yeah. Just what he did to me, you know, leaving me with no money. Yes, I forgave him. How do you know your diverticulitis is healed? Because I'm not feeling any pain. Here, stand up here and show me. Where was it? Where? In your tummy, right down there. Seven inches of my intestine removed because of that disease. I had seven inches of my intestine removed because of that disease, and then it. Yeah. Always hurt. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Does this hurt? Does that hurt? You were hurting when you came here. I was. I was hurt. Now it's all gone. And the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for your healing power. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for holy for healing me, Father God, and the forgiveness, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for healing me. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for everything that you've done tonight, Father. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. This lady here got healed of diverticulitis. That lady got healed of chest pain and arthritis. That 72-year-old woman got healed full-body arthritis. Completely healed tonight. Not to mention demons flying out of people like bottle rockets. Listen, next Friday night, next Thursday night, we will repeat this. We will repeat this 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. The Arizona Deliverance Center, the anointing's going up here. Get down here if you're sick. Get down here if you're being oppressed by spirits because God wants to heal you. We have people flying in from out of state every single week now. Every single week, 90% of them are being healed. We're not up to 100%, but we're working on it. I'll see you next Friday. HardcoreChristianity.com. Go to the website and review the teaching page click on the teaching satan's counterattack click on the other teaching how satan controls the mind you have to read those two short bible studies so you know how satan got you in the condition you're in and how you can keep from being reinfected remember if you got healed or delivered it is not a cure all you must renew your mind. Renewing the mind is the most important thing. Change your life now. Change everything about your life. See you next Friday.